What if the season-defining breakthrough of 2025 lives not in a wind tunnel model or a simulator, but inside a palm-sized carbon drum bolted to McLaren's rear axle? Since the very first shakedown laps at Silverstone, thermal cameras have shown the Papaya car's brake housings glowing a calm indigo while every rival's flare scarlet, and in that colour shift lies an advantage big enough to tilt an entire championship. Engineers from up and down the pit lane have enlarged those infrared frames until the pixels burst, yet the mystery only deepens. How does McLaren shed so little heat into its rear tyres when every other team fights temperature spikes? Today, we peel back those drums, trace the evolution from crisis to conquest, and reveal how a whisper of controlled airflow may decide the destiny of Formula One's biggest trophies. The intrigue detonated after the Japanese Grand Prix. A freelance photographer armed with a long-range flyer scope caught McLaren's number four during a pit stop and sold the frames for a rumoured five-figure sum. The pictures were startling, while Mercedes and Ferrari brake drums blazed orange. McLaren's rear covers shimmered yellow-green, proof that their surface sat tens of degrees cooler even after the punishing 180-degree spoon corner and the flat-out surge past the grandstands. Curiosity became obsession overnight. Red Bull bought new imaging gear, Ferrari mined social media for fan footage, and wind tunnel crews across Europe machined scale ducts at breakneck speed. Forums overflowed with overlays, pointing to hidden louvers or secret cooling sprays. Some analysts blamed emissivity tricks in the carbon weave. Most fixated on a simpler truth. Cooler drums keep wheel rims cooler, and cooler rims stop heat from bleeding into the tyre shoulder. In an era when rear tyre temperature dictates everything from traction out of slow bends to degradation on lap 30, McLaren's uncanny chill looked like alchemy. Why does a handful of degrees matter? Picture a braking zone at race pace. A machine weighing roughly 740 kilograms and carrying more than 300 kilowatts of kinetic energy slams from 320 kilometers per hour to a second gear hairpin in little more than two heartbeats. Carbon ceramic discs burst past 600 degrees Celsius almost instantly and can spike above 800 before the driver even begins to ease off the pedal. Every joule that escapes the disc migrates outward, first to the caliper, then to the aluminium rim, finally into the rubber carcass where it overpressurizes the tyre and robs grip. Managing that cascade is a daily knife edge. The brief is to channel just enough air to keep the discs alive, but not so much that the carbon drops below its sweet spot and breaking efficacy nosedives. At the front axle, engineers sometimes welcome a breath of warmth to wake the tyres on an outlap. At the rear, the order is ruthless isolation. Alpine's chassis, Chief David Sanchez, distilled it perfectly. Use the minimum flow to cool the brakes and the maximum to cool everything else. McLaren appears to have turned that mantra into an art form by directing meticulously metered streams at the rotor while wrapping the rest in a refrigerated cocoon. Strip away the wheel and you find what looks like a Russian doll puzzle. Nearest the glowing rotor sits a compact carbon ceramic capsule whose inner wall carries a thin ceramic laminate that reflects infrared energy back into the disc instead of out toward the rim. Threaded through that capsule are three individual flow corridors. One targets the inboard disc face, a second bathes the low-slung caliper, and a third strokes the outer face. Encasing everything is a fourth envelope, an ever-circulating torus of cool air that insulates the hot core from the wheel. The outer blanket exists thanks to a vent high on the inner duct, enlarged for this season. Fresh air sweeps in, loops around the assembly, and exits through sculpted channels tuned to generate a gentle low-pressure draw. That flow not only saps heat, but also stabilizes the pressure balance that once plagued McLaren's earlier designs. Telemetry is supplied by a tiny pressure sensor poking through a service port. Mechanics plug it in during practice runs, harvest data, then tape the hole with fluorescent film once Parc Fermé rules apply. Its readings confirm hot air is expelled instead of recirculated, a crucial detail as you will soon see. Wind the clock back three seasons to the 2022 Bahrain Grand Prix. McLaren arrived with an ambitious brake concept and left with scorched discs, melted boots and drivers forced to baby the pedal on every straight. Post-race autopsies showed airflow had stalled inside the duct, reversed and roasted the discs from within. The humiliation sparked a vow in Woking, never again. What followed was a marathon of computational fluid dynamics runs and laboratory experiments. Engineers printed transparent drums in polycarbonate, flooded them with fog, and filmed vortices at 5,000 frames per second. 
They discovered pressure spikes ricocheting around the cavity like trapped bees and learned that widening one exit by half a millimetre could halve rotor face temperatures. Over three winters, the team built ever tighter shrouds and ever cleaner exits until the current architecture emerged, an elegant exercise in controlled breathing that keeps peak drum temperatures almost 50 degrees lower than the field average on a representative long run. The MCL-39's hybrid recovery map does much of that preventative work. Under deceleration, the rear motor generator harvests a slightly higher fraction of energy than its rivals, so the discs perform less mechanical stopping while the battery swells for the next straight. Lower rotor work equals lower rotor temperature, a direct gift to tyre longevity. The mechanical platform amplifies the effect. A fiercely anti-dive front geometry paired with anti-squat at the rear keeps the chassis level, preventing the weight transfer that usually toasts rear rubber. Re-angled wishbones, made possible by relocating the steering arm halfway down the front lower link. Let the aerodynamic floor keep generating downforce, even while the car pitches. Aerostability means the driver can brake later without abrupt rear axle loads, trimming scrub and surface temperature. Add in lateral geometry that maintains a generous contact patch and the result is a tyre that lives happily lap after lap, while competitors' infrared sensors bleed red. After a sweltering Miami Grand Prix, Oscar Piastri's winning margin was more than 35 seconds, the FIA impounded the rear corners of both Papaya cars. Inspectors measured wall thickness with ultrasound, weighed the drums to the gram, and pressure-tested cavities for hidden water jackets or paraffin inserts. By dawn, the verdict was unambiguous. Every duct, shroud and sensor lay squarely within the rules. The sole curiosity was the service port used for that pressure sensor. Legal during practice, it must be sealed for qualifying and the race. McLaren had already faced questions about the opening in Hungary the previous season and now tapes it with neon film before Parc Fermé. Satisfied stewards closed the investigation and rival protests fizzled. Far from clipping McLaren's wings, the inspection merely highlighted how much performance can be mined by working in the rule book's grey zones rather than stepping over the line. Replication, however, has proved anything but straightforward. One fashionable paddock theory involves embedding shape-stabilised phase change pellets inside the drum wall. These granules would melt near 700 degrees Celsius, absorbing latent heat, like ice in a drink, then re-solidify on the straights. Ingenious on paper, the idea collapses when weighed. The pellets add mass exactly where teams battle for every gram, and FIA scans in Miami found none in the papaya car. Another rumour centres on exotic carbon fibre weaves, porous enough to bleed microscopic jets of cooling air. Red Bull tested a prototype but shelved it when the gain proved marginal and the manufacturing complexity spiralled. A third suggestion, that McLaren missed super dry water vapour inside the duct, ignores a basic rule. Any form of liquid cooling is banned outright. With each theory shot down, rival technical directors admit the uncomfortable truth. McLaren integrated brake cooling, hybrid deployment and suspension kinematics into one concept three seasons ago. Copying it now means redrawing half a car and spending development tokens already earmarked elsewhere. Can anyone catch up before the silverware is out of reach? McLaren's edge is not witchcraft, it is the compound interest of three years spent studying airflow, heat transfer and chassis dynamics in forensic detail. A few millimetres of carbon, a swirl of carefully shepherded air and the painful memory of a Bahrain inferno. That is the alchemy keeping the papaya tyres serenely cool while others sizzle. Unless a rival uncovers a shortcut soon, 2025 may be remembered as the year a world title was won inside a brake drum no larger than a breakfast bowl.